clock in the silhouette of the hair. So again, hair, you know, you can look at it and you think, oh, that's a bit, you know, a bit of a complicated hairstyle. Lots of curls or waves or sculpting of the hair, whatever. But if you just block it in as a, in as a silhouette to begin with, think of it as, you know, a, a Lego person. And, and at this stage, Russell has a, a clip on plastic hairdo. And, uh, you know, we'll refine that later. So, so even though the hair isn't very dark at all on the left side of here, I'm still going to paint it in in that way. And as I say, we can come back and fix that in a bit. Now, there's also a dark shadow here. Right, let me just adjust the camera a touch for you. Oh, you can still see just about. OK, so um, there's still a, there's a dark shadow here under the collar of the shirt. And a little bit up here as well. And under this side of the collar as well. And in this um, crease in the in the fabric there. And then I can use that same colour to put in some shadows in the nostrils. I've switched to a small filbert brush here. And I've just dipped into that same shadow colour that I've got on the palette. I said I was going to do the nostrils. I, I will, but I'm going to do that in just a second. I actually think it's slightly more efficient if I just go to the right eye here. And I'm going to enhance that line I've got for the, the eyelashes. And I'm going to use this shadow colour. So Russell has blue eyes. Um, but I'm going to use this dark purpley blue shadow colour to just pop in the iris there and then if I look at the right uh, the, well the eye that's on our left so Russell's right eye I can apply a similar treatment and again create a fairly dark disc for that iris as well and now I'm ready to move on to the the nostrils so I've got to look quite carefully at the shapes of these. To be honest, that this colour probably isn't dark enough, but as a first iteration, that's OK. So having established the face, what I'm going to do now is put in a background colour to, to, to lose most of this, to, just to improve the contrast. I'm probably going to put in a very light purple. And I'll mix that purple in just a second, but switching to a slightly bigger brush, this is probably about a, an inch and a half, something like that. So I'm grabbing some titanium white. And as Russell's wearing a blue shirt, I thought, well, it's going to make more sense if I do the blue first and then convert that to a purple. So simply uh, French ultramarine blue and the titanium white mixed up you know, reasonably thoroughly there. Once again, I'm going to keep the surface of the painting moist on this lower half. And I'm not overly interested in painting the shirt in a, in a great amount of detail, so I just want to create a sense of form here. So the colour I've mixed up is the, going to be the highlight colour. You can see the wet in wets, you know, it allows for some, you know, automatic blending, which can produce interesting effects. Dragging the paint through the watercolour marker um, is also a good way to create a little bit of automatic blending and smearing. Let's go over to this collar on the right. OK, so we've blocked in the shirt. So having blocked in the shirt in a fairly simple but reasonably expressive way, now that I've got this light blue on my palette, what I can do is I can grab some more titanium white and just a little corner of the alizarin crimson. Let's get a little bit more of that. Nope, that didn't work. There we go.
and that color is probably too pinkish I would say so I'm going to get some more of the blue so it didn't work quite as uh, smoothly as I wanted it to but such is life so that's not too bad that's not too bad so what we'll do so remember this is the conventional acrylic in the background so I'm just kind of selectively wetting that and yeah I've just put in the background fairly quickly here so now what I'm going to do is now Russell's actually sitting on a chair which I haven't depicted at all so what I'm going to do is just uh, now that colour's a little darker than I wanted, but for the left-hand side of the face, that's probably okay. So the line of the back of the chair starts about here. If I drag my brush that way, then that bit of unpainted or unpainted in purple colour, that can create the back of the chair there. And then I can continue this colour round to the left-hand side of the head. And actually, although now that I'm doing this, what I think I'm going to do is, so my original plan was to continue this colour across the entire background. But I think what I'm going to do is just use it mostly for the left hand side of the painting. And, you know, we'll see what it looks like at the end. But what I'm going to do is stop the, the this background colour there, where, where I've just put that vertical line in. I think that makes for a nice kind of uh, contrast on left and right but I do need to put in the the back of the chair so the back of the chair comes out around about there and it basically